back on their special day. Some of you came from a few blocks away, while others traveled across the country. But all of you had to cross the Manahawkin Bay and the Causeway Bridge together. Every time I drove over, drive over that bridge to get to the island, the smell of the salt air, the glimmering sun reflecting off the bay, and the sight of land stretching out ahead from the lighthouse to the north all the way to the wild lake preserve in the south causes all my stress and worries to leave me for that one instant in time. Our LBI friends and 16th Street neighbors know what I'm talking about. Hopefully the rest of you will have that feeling today also, at least for one evening, especially if we're lucky enough to get that spectacular sunset tonight, just a little while. Cass and Seth met here on this island and fell in love. They escaped their worries like the rest of us here, and for those reasons, they chose this place to begin their new life together as a married couple. I would like to take a moment to give thanks to my wife, Cheryl, and after all the hard work she put into turning the But for the 30 year commitment she made in making sure our daughter grew up to be the fantastic young woman she is today. To Seth's parents, Mark and Cindy Chazar, for being here today and sharing their wonderful son with us. I know that you are both so proud of him, and we can each are truly happy to welcome him into our family. <laughs> to all the bridesmaids and groomsmen, thank you for the hard work, time, and money that you put into all the different facets of the wedding experience. We know that it's not easy to juggle the many different events and these responsibilities with the busy, busy lives you all have. For our officiant, Mike W., I can't pronounce his last name. And <laughs> he did a fine job out there, I'm saying. Our journey with Cassidy started on the day she was born when Cheryl and I had to choose her name. Although the other names we considered at the time were far more traditional, we decided to go for the one that was a little bit more off-center than the others. This, in turn, I'm convinced, shaped Cassidy's slightly off-center personality. <laughs> she writes left-handed, but she does everything else with her right hand or right foot. She always won races and competitions for whatever team she was on whether it was running or paddle boarding, but somehow she's still always the last person to finish getting ready and the last to get out the door whenever we have to go somewhere, no matter where or why. She was so easy going until she turned 16. <laughs> then she became possessed by the devil, which she discovered her. The exorcism went fairly well. <laughs> She, she's always been able to achieve at school, at work, or with her music, but she can't seem to keep track of her purse or ID or something. <laughs> she's moved out, then back home, then out again, in a cycle of at least five times. Hopefully it's time to stay. <laughs> Cass is highly creative, but some of her ideas can be a bit scary. She's a good multitasker, but she's never been a completionist. <laughs> she, she thrives on chaos, but somehow manages to put, pull things together in the end. During early COVID, we had a mask-making factory in the dining room, a painting gallery in the sunroom, a music conservatory in the living room, and a gourmet juice bar in the kitchen. <laughs> Did I mention the thousand-piece jigsaw puzzle on the coffee table? <laughs> Cass can be stubborn and flexible at the same time, and she's always chasing after that next adventure. Fuck the upset. I'm so proud of Cassidy for all the things she's accomplished. Starting with the time she learned how to ride a two-wheeler bike just by getting on it and taking off with no help. She learned how to be tough from the epic battle she had with her brother's ride, <laughs> which still continues to this day. And that's led to the absolute certainty she possesses when expressing her ideas at home and in the workplace, and the fearlessness she shows every time she gets in front of a crowd with her guitar and sings her original songs. She's always excelled at sports, which taught her how to set and pursue goals, work with her teammates, and emerge as a leader. She's worked hard through her career, all her career changes, paying her dues in the early years, helping Melissa run Beads by the Bay, <laughs> and, and slicing lunch meat at the country corner uh, general store deli counter, followed by waiting tables at Daddy O with Heather. Her, her path from teaching to, in elementary schools to providing child life services in medical settings speak to her passion for children, their families, and their well-being through difficult times. Seth's journey, I'm told, involved immersing himself in sports as a boy and as a young man, especially wrestling, where he experienced great success. He has many friends who supported him along the way, even now, and most of them are here today. Physical fitness and health became Seth's passion, but for various reasons, he had to put a pause on college early on. Seth took his talents to the Army as an infantryman in the 101st Airborne Division, quickly to keep <laughs> He 
he, he was invited to attend a premier leadership program, Ranger School, where he completed all phases on his first attempt and was promoted to the rank of corporal. While there, Seth won several military competency boards that tested soldiers on their technical skills and tactical experience. He has some nice shiny hardware on his uniform. Mm -hmm. yeah. Seth graduated from Ranger Assessment and Selection Program while earning the Physical Fitness Award for scoring highest among all candidates. He was assigned to the prestigious 1st Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment, a direct action raid force holding authority in many war zones around the world, where he remained for three additional years. During his four tours of duty in Afghanistan, Seth rose to the rank of Staff Sergeant, became responsible for the welfare and development of several Rangers below him. During that time, he became enthralled by the work of physical therapists he encountered in the Army from his first-hand experiences with personal injury and his early PTs in action with other servicemen. This shaped Seth's new career and path he made, his new career path, and he made an extremely tough decision to leave the structure and security provided by the Army to pursue a career as a physical therapist. This meant taking another shot at college and re-entering the world of uncertainty. Seth attended Stockton University, and a few weeks ago, graduated summa cum laude after considering multiple offers, Seth selected Drexel University's graduate program in physical therapy. We're going to begin in September. Seth remains in the Army Reserves, and we all thank him for his service. Seth thanks the Army, too, for their service to him as well. They gave him his high standards, confidence, perseverance, mental and physical strength, leadership, work ethic, discipline, and commitment. All these qualities make him an outstanding fit for my daughter. Seth also has a great deal of humility, which is why I'm sure he's not happy that he's standing here. Seth's <laughs> so the real deal. He deserves full recognition for all he's accomplished, and we are all very proud of him and respect him for doing everything it takes to achieve his goals. Yeah! Seth is an outstanding young man with a great sense of humor, and he's generally fun to be around. He's a happy, gentle giant for the only thing for him. And most importantly, he loves Cassidy. Oh. So, and this was a reference earlier. It was Cassidy's birthday in August of 2015. And she was out partying hard with her mother and some of her mother's friends. <laughs> Sounds a bit lame to me, but not that there's anything wrong with uh, They were going to have a wild night at a beachfront tiki bar not too far from here. But as can often be the case, there weren't enough bar stools in a row for all the ladies to sit together. Unbeknownst to them, a young, handsome soldier just back from deployment in Afghanistan <laughs> on vacation with his godfather, Kevin, okay. was seated at the very next bar stool. Noticing the dilemma at hand, the young gentleman offered he and his godfather to each move down one seat, creating enough space for the ladies to sit. Cassidy being Cassidy looked him straight in the eyes and told him, if I really want your bar stool, I'll just push you off. <laughs> While the rest is history. <laughs> Following the remainder of that weekend touring LBI, the two of them started their long distance romance between New Jersey and Fort Campbell, Kentucky, which was later replaced by Savannah, Georgia. Several road trips were made, but during this time, as I had not yet met Seth until much later, to me, he was still just a telephone boy. <laughs> Things got real in 2017 with Cassidy resigned her teaching position in Marlton, got a new one in Georgia, and moved there to close that long distance gap between them. As Cass puts it, love conquers all. <laughs> Things got even more interesting as Seth ultimately decided to make that big career change, leaving the military, and Cassidy decided to quit her teaching job, go back to college, and become a child life specialist, whatever that is. <laughs> we both landed back here in New Jersey with Cheryl and I, together, each swimming in uncharted waters. Seth, a full-time student, and Cass going to work in a hospital. Things happen for a reason at times. The next chapter for Cassidy and Seth will include their upcoming honeymoon in Switzerland and Italy. They'll continue to enjoy their cozy boutique store top apartment in downtown Haddonfield, spending some summer weekends here on the LBI. Seth will begin attending PT school in the fall and be busy for that with that for the next two and a half years. Cass is now pursuing her latest change the world mission, the 
merger of child life services and public education. Combine your two career, career paths and do a, you know, a new job in the school. So whatever comes along the way, Cass and Seth have each proven their ability to adapt and pivot. So I have little worries for the future. Ultimately, they will continue to pursue their goals and follow their passions. But at the end of the day, we'll be together. That's what matters most. Cass and Seth, I know you will both be very happy and forge a great life together. Enjoy and remember this moment forever. You are with people today who love you and care about you very much. Yeah, yeah. Cheryl and I will always be there. To you both, it's worth bearing in mind, neither of you will ever be perfect, but you can be perfect to match for each other. A successful marriage is not about finding a person you can live with, but finding a person you can't live without, and I know you've found that in each other. Yeah. Be good communicators, good listeners, kind and tolerant. A minute spent feeling sad or angry is a minute's happiness lost for That and last, remember, the, too short, the shortest distance between two people is laughter. So, ladies and gentlemen, please raise your glass. Join me in a toast to the bride and groom. Cassie and Seth, to life full of love, happiness, joy, and fulfillment. Cheers! Cheers! Let's hear it for Bruce and that wonderful toast.